In this video, we're going to take the title Hello World and make it responsive even though it's sitting in an absolute position in this design. We'll take it from desktop down to tablet all the way down to a mobile framework. And we're starting right now. All right, so I'm going to start with a Bootstrap basic template. If you go to bootstrap.com, if you head down towards the middle of the page, there's a wonderful starter template that includes the doc type, the language, the head, the body, and hello world. The only thing I've also done in addition to this Bootstrap template was I added a custom CSS. So if I go to custom CSS and say body, almost always my first check to make sure it works. I'll say background color aqua and lo and behold, it changes it right on the fly. So let's go ahead and start inside the index.html to build the HTML framework and then we'll come back to the CSS and make this all work. What I first wanna do is build a masthead to contain the picture and then we'll pull the text down in our design. Hello world, nice to see you too. And hello world, the H1. So if we just take out the H1 for right now, I'm gonna go and say div class and call this one masthead. And in here, I'm gonna create a style because I wanna bring a background image in. Now, if you only have one background image, then you can put in the CSS. But I think about if I were to have multiple pages, I'm gonna write inline CSS, which I almost never do, but in this case, it is justified. In this case right here, I'm gonna say style equals background image colon, and I'll add the, co the colon, the parentheses. Oops, I got to add URL, then the parentheses, and then the semicolon at the end. Inside the URL, I'm gonna target this file, forestandriver.jpg. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say single quotes in here, and say period slash images, and then forestandriver.jpg. We can then close this up. I'll put the word test in there just to make sure it works. And lo and behold, the picture goes all the way across the page. Now, right now it's entirely not responsive. So if I move this, notice how it doesn't grow or shrink at all. The picture just assumes it's gonna go across the entire page and that's where it's gonna go. We're gonna come back in a second and change that in our CSS. Let's continue a little more HTML and then we'll go over to the CSS section in a few. I'll take the test word out and I'm gonna say div class color overlay. Now this helps me design if I wanna add an extra bit of contrast into my design when it comes to the text. I always try to push the text as strong as possible for maximum readability. So I'm gonna say color overlay in here and because we are using the bootstrap framework, I'm gonna add a div class and say the word container. All the container does, it allows me to create the breakpoints within Bootstrap. And that H1 tag that we commented out below, we're gonna bring it right back. So we should have is the word hello, and notice how it's off the edge of the design. And now the text, if we look at it from a responsive design, will move based upon the breakpoints. And in Bootstrap version five, it's also responsibly getting bigger and smaller based upon the width of the browser. Pretty cool. So we have the text moving, but what I wanna do is I wanna have it in a fixed position down below. And of course I need to make it white because it's black right now. So we have the basic framework in our HTML. What I next wanna do is now go into the CSS and make this actually work the way we had talked about it being in a responsive design, but also being relative and absolute. Inside of our CSS, we're gonna write masthead and putting period before that to indicate it is a class name. In the masthead, we're gonna add a min height of 60 vertical height. To me, what I like about the min height is it's based upon the height of the browser. So if the fact the browser goes up or down, the height of the masthead is relatively staying the same at 60. And I always add a min height. Now this one probably could fit when it comes to a height because we are gonna add a little bit of a relative absolute, but I still think about if it were to get any larger, I want the picture to flow and so the text doesn't flow on top of it. 
After the min height of 60 VH, we have to say position, not inherit, position relative. And then we're going to add a couple things. We'll add the background size being cover. Now this will work on almost all browser. I've seen a couple other options. So I'm going to put them in just to make sure this works on every older browser as well. I'm going to say WebKit and say background size. Did I get it right? Yeah, WebKit background size cover. And then I'll say Moz background size cover. And then we'll also add the O, which is the old Opera, just to catch it in case anyone else happened to have the old Opera version. Background dash size cover. Again, these are not necessarily required. This just catches older browsers. So if you feel like taking those out and you just want to hit the background size to cover, go for it. I'm probably in the next year or two, probably going to drop these, but old habits do die hard. So I'm going to save this. And now what happens is the picture covers the space relative. Now, obviously you will not view this website in this such extreme horizontal version. So if we take this to more of a modern size, that looks much better. Now we can see the whole entire picture in this design and it covers the space. And if we hit the mobile design, we can see the picture fits just fine as well. Let's bring this back to where we have to be. There we go. And let's continue on from the masthead. After the masthead, I'm going to say masthead and then container. I'm going to write it both ways with not necessarily saying the container on its own in case we're going to use the container down the road. So here I'm going to say overflow hidden just to catch anything that happens to go overflow. Not necessarily required, but I do use it with again, old habits do die hard. I'm going to add a masthead and we're also going to say H1 to design the text inside of this masthead. And in here, I'm going to say color equals white so we can see it. The position will be absolute. Position, absolute. Now here's where the magic's going to happen. By default, it sticks at the top of the page. What I want to do is I want to come up from the bottom. The position absolute, I can write the word bottom and say zero. And the reason why I like this is because this is almost responsive from the bottom, which is so awesome. So what I can do is I can push up from the bottom by saying in this case, not zero, but one, two, five rem. What I'll do is it'll move it up relative with this root emphasis or root almost like a percentage in here. And I'm gonna add a max width because I don't want my title to go so far across the page. Down the road, I wanna build a two column design. Therefore, I don't want this text to go all the way across. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say max, in this case, width, and I'll say 550 pixels. And while we can't see it really right here, we know that it's only gonna go as far as 550 pixels across. The padding I'm going to give it, because down the road, it's going to not enable the padding as it becomes responsive. So I'm going to add one more piece. The padding I'm going to add is to the right, and that's 1.5 rem. Now, this one only takes an acceleration when we hit the mobile site. So if I were to flip this to inspect and move this down just a little bit, what will happen is if the text were to grow, let's actually add some more text to this. So let's say hello world. I want to make the title even longer to show the padding. If I save this, maybe, maybe not. What would happen is, apparently my live server has decided not to be live. Hello world. So if we take a look at that custom CSS and I turn off that padding right, Apparently it's going to lag a little bit longer. What would happen here, this text happens to wrap just right. I built this before it didn't wrap perfectly. So kudos to somehow it working all of a sudden here. But if you look at it in this H1, somehow it is dragging. There we go. Notice how there is no padding on the right hand side of that area. So if we add padding, 
what's going to happen is even if the text were to get to the edge, now we have is if you look at that little bit of green area on the right hand side, it's now creating a padding. So the text sits essentially in the middle of the page right here. And again, this is how far the title goes. So it doesn't go so far down the page. We can move this back up to fit in our space. There we go. So it's looking pretty good, but the problem is that I can't really read the text, especially on this background. Now, yes, we could darken the picture in Photoshop, but if I were to change the photograph, I wanna create some sort of color overlay. In this case, I wanna create a black overlay in this design. I say the word color because if I did wanna add an orange or a red overlay, I don't have to worry about changing the CSS. So I'm gonna say color overlay and this position will also be absolute. And what we're going to do is we're going to say height equals 100% and width equals 100%. This is just to ensure it's going to cover the space of this cover. That was a poor definition. So what I want to do is if I were to add a background and in here, I want to add a linear gradient. So I'm gonna say linear gradient, and in here I've kind of mapped it out. There's a fantastic tool if you ever wanna create gradients. If we go to CSS gradient and we pull it up, what I wanna create is a gradient just on the bottom part of my design. Here's the coolest part. It writes the gradient for me. And I somehow have 65 with this long number here going on. But all I have to do is I can copy this gradient and drop it into my design. And if I copy and paste this, let's indent that in there, what's gonna happen is somehow the gradient should show up. Now here's the thing. I'm pretty sure my text inside my CSS is correct, so I'm pretty sure I spelled something incorrectly. Color overlay, let me just copy and paste this one. To color, oops, color overlay. Well, there's your answer, Hayden. So if I paste this, uh, now what we get is a much cleaner gradient coming down the page and hitting the very bottom. Now again, this is not showing the best example, but again, most people are not gonna look at this browser in this certain way of this such wide width. So if we take it down to more of a modern size browser, now what we have is the gradient fills in behind the text of hello world, I want to make the title even longer. And here's the responsiveness. Notice how we're coming up from the bottom, even though it says absolute. So if we go just back to hello world, inside of here, let's take this out and we'll go back to hello world without the period. Now the gradient fits in even better in this design. Now you can make your width whatever size you want. I just kind of use it as a general rule of thumb, looking at a more width and then a smaller second column but notice how hello world sits at the bottom of this text and it's responsive no matter where we move and that gradient also fits. This is looking great on the desktop, but to me when I go to the mobile design, so if we were to flip it right like this, if I look at it from a mobile design standpoint, I only have a limited amount of space on the mobile screen. And to me this picture is good, but I love to move it up just a little bit. Because we have the relative absolute built into our design, we can simply write a media query and make this a little bit shorter of height and then the text moves responsively. What I wanna do is right below the gradient, I'm gonna add media and say max width and Bootstrap gives us the number. So I'm gonna say 991.98 is their number for the responsive design, and that's really going to the tablet approach. And I'm gonna say in here, masthead, and simply change the min height, min height, down to 30 VH. Because everything, oh, that looks gorgeous. Now the picture really flows even better. So if I were to then move this design, there we go, hello world. Now everything becomes responsive while still keeping the picture at the bottom. And that's how we can create a responsive absolute positioning.